You know what this is? This is the exact moment a spy maid's mouth will start to water. They know that next they'll be able to get that sweet backstab. What the? Weapon ah! reskin. Oh, oh, I gotcha, didn't I? Unfortunately, backstabs come down to a little more than just if the enemy is looking the other way. Because a lot can happen in the time when someone is looking away from you to the point where you can actually backstab. <laughs> And we'll call this Spy's Moment. Now, Spy's Moment doesn't come around very much, but it's within this moment that allows for Spy's absolutely insane plays that no other class can pull off. Only problem is what the rest of the time is filled with. Yeah, I wouldn't really recommend going for plays in this period over here, so we'll just call this bit of time death. And you'd think, well obviously Cyber Wizard, I wouldn't go for stabs if it's not a good time to. And my rebuttal to that is, you will. If you've died at all while playing Spy, excluding events like getting randomly killed while cloaked, then you are probably at the wrong place at the wrong time. Which also means you were in death territory. Now, I don't blame you if you've gone for a play and died in death territory, because it's really hard to determine when Spy's moment is versus when that death moment is. Especially because every now and then a good moment turns into a bad one and a bad one turns into a good one. It can seem almost random sometimes for new and experienced spies alike. So today we're going to have a look at what makes for a good spy play. And the number one thing to look out for is called game state. I already know you guys have no clue what I'm talking about, and even some more experienced players are probably lost here. Well, in its most basic form, there is three levels of game state. Advantage, when your team is winning, disadvantage, when your team is losing, and neutral, when neither team is fighting yet and are both looking for openings. Now, Spy can pull things off in all of these states, just each state of play is a different opening and timing to abide by. For example, in your team's disadvantage state, it will be a lot harder to get a high impact play thanks to the fact that their team has less to focus on since they're already winning and likely have more players alive than your team, which also means less distractions. While in your team's advantage state, if their team is already crippling and falling apart, it's a lot easier for a spy to slide into the chaos and secure the win for your team. Now that's not to say that you should never go for stabs when you're losing, you just need to find ways to mitigate the risk. Most of Spy's gameplay is mitigating the inherent risk of going for plays with him as much as possible, while making the reward as high as possible, and managing game state gets Spy the closest to consistency that he can get. Now how game state plays into this is that it gives you a formula of knowing what is very likely to happen next at any given time since you can read the flow of the game and use hard reads to determine what the enemy team wants to do. With game state, you don't necessarily want to go for a stab exactly once you see that your team is winning, because a lot of times, by the time you're in position, the fight will already be over and you'll have already missed your opportunity. The ideal way to use game state is to not only look at the current state of the game and determine what the best thing you can do at the given time, but to look at cues of the game state shifting, like which team has more players alive, what classes are alive on both teams, and how much time is left in a round. These kinds of things can clue you in on what the enemy team is going to do next, and where you should be to make a play off of it. A very basic example that I think everyone will be able to understand is the fabled pub push, where there's 10 seconds left in a round and the aggressing team all blindly starts throwing themselves at the point to try and salvage. This is a fairly obvious time for Spy to go for a play, so simply putting yourself behind the objective in advance can set up for free kills. Hopefully this whole game state thing is starting to make a little more sense now, especially since we're going to delve deep into the specifics of game state and how to use it to its maximum potential. Starting off with neutral, the most important game state. That's your stupid aggressive trick step, Spy Nance. It's freaking wrong. Hey, 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 you talking shit about me? Oh, yeah, you can get killed God like it, once every like right. hour, oh once every blue moon. Are you, are you what are you doing? What are you doing? You literally play trick step. You, you, you go in, you get one kill, then you die. You, you are like not 10 doing minutes, a single thing to help one you. Neutral takes up a majority of the game, and happens when neither team is currently fighting head to head. This means that whoever has the capture point doesn't necessarily matter. Now let's finally get into what is Spy's job in Neutral. Well, in neutral, Spy's most important job is communication. There isn't exactly a whole lot of things that Spy can do to affect the scoreboard in this period, so most of what he'll do is wait for a play to be needed, while kind of scouting around for his team a bit. It seems lame, but there really isn't any other class that can get the same view of what's going on that Spy can. Like, look here. All I have to do is tell my team exactly where they are, and then wait patiently for a little bit. And as we can see, after waiting for a little bit, they start fighting, and bam, two free stabs. And this kind of thing tends to happen a lot. In competitive, Spy can a lot of times control the game. Obviously in a casual setting, this may play out a bit differently since most teams won't be paying much attention to comms, but something you can go for in both competitive neutral and casual neutral is what I like to call free plays. Unless you're running the cloak and dagger, you won't be able to sit in place forever waiting for something to happen. Your cloak will eventually run out and you'll have to do something. 
But what is this something? Well, most times there isn't too many plays you can really get for free per se, but there are some that are pretty close. Excluding sniper picks and kills on free to play players, a play that I like to do in neutral when nothing else is really happening is going for the teleporters. This doesn't seem like something much more than annoying at first, but not only does it take the engineer at least 20 seconds to get them back up, but it makes it much harder for the enemy to reset neutral after a fight since their spawns will come up much lower. So every kill your team gets while the teleporters are down is essentially doubled in terms of respawn time. Something else you you can do is attempt to help the flank. While this is much more risky, it is much easier to go for a couple people in the flank who expect to spy less than it is to go for a kill in the combo. Opening up the flank can be very valuable to start up an advantageous position for your team and change the game state. And changing the game state is a lot of times relied on spies to do. Sometimes spies will be expected to fill snipers role and go for a play to change the flow of the game. Nine times out of ten this will fail. Well, if you're by yourself. Like have a look here. My team's having some problems destroying the sentry gun. So I decide it'd be a good idea to coordinate with my soldier. So all I do is call when I'm decloaking and that sentry nest is as good as gone, even right in the middle of a neutral situation. As I said though, there is three different stages of neutral, slight advantage, slight disadvantage, and true neutral. Going for a play in all of these is still gonna be a death sentence in most cases, but depending on the stage of neutral, you can control the risk reward much better, especially if you coordinate with your team. If your team is in true neutral or slight disadvantage, this won't always work super well since most times their players will be aware enough of spy, and have enough players to deal with both the spy and the player who is being the distraction. However, if their team is in slight disadvantage and are missing even just one or two combo players, this will drastically increase the chances of success since there's less attention to be split among players. Phew, this video really is just turning into a knowledge dump. Alright, here, take a quick dopamine break before we move on. <laughs> Thanks, Asian businessman. All right, back to the video then. Quick recap. Neutral contains many dangerous high-risk, high-reward plays, but you are also able to help shift the game state for your team via things like destroying teleporters and getting small picks. Most of neutral, though, is trying to prepare your team for advantage state. So what happens when you finally get into advantage state? Now, during a fight, advantage and disadvantage state are pretty flexible since the tides can change at any given moment. The main things to look out for to determine whether your team or the enemy are in advantage or disadvantage are players alive, especially important classes like sniper, medic, demo, and pyro, health points on both teams, uber percentage, sentry guns, and positioning. There are of course more you could add to the list, but I think this is a good baseline to start out with. All of these signs should point you towards what to do next, and the more of these signs you observe, the better chance you have of making a good play. So like, look here. I'm kind of just hanging out waiting for something to happen. Then my team decides to bomb in and go for a play in their med. We're not able to get their medic, but we get their pyro, which gives me a perfect opportunity to decloak since there's no one watching the med. This is an early advantage state and it gives you the most reward for getting a play. However, the fight hasn't necessarily developed enough yet for you to have a guarantee at making something happen. Have a look here. Similar situation, but their heavy's dead this time. I go for a cheeky play, but get immediately called out since they're not fighting my team anymore. Unfortunately, it isn't as easy as deciding to go for a play as soon as you get into an advantage state. If you want an easier play though, Spy can also wait until late advantage state to go for kills. Like look here, I just had to wait for my team to win the fight and I'm able to pop in with my gun and take a few people's lives. It's not always better to go in immediately. Sometimes it's better to wait until you know you're gonna win so that you can get the more guaranteed play. Sure, you win the fight regardless, but this makes your winning last for longer. This all comes down to you as a Spy player's decision though. But now let's have a look at what would happen if your team was the one losing. All right, yeah, I'm gonna keep the end of the video short. It really just isn't worth it to go for a play when your team is already dead most times. I mean, sure, you could get this crazy high impact play on a medic, but most times if you get a kill, your team's already dead so they can't do anything about it. So it's not only gonna be harder to get a kill since your team is already dead and not gonna be able to distract them as well, but once you get the kill, there's gonna be no one to profit off of it. I mean, if it's still early on in a fight though, then by all means go for something if you have to but it's still not really the safest situation. To wrap up the video though, you definitely wanna be going for plays more over here and try to stay less from going for plays over here. And remember, always try to plan ahead. The more prepared you are, the more chance you'll get a play off of something. Here's the part though that I admit that this is mostly for competitive players. Now don't get me wrong, this kind of stuff can definitely help in casual. It's just definitely more tailored towards being useful and competitive. For everybody who is interested in trying out competitive, I won't only be leaving a link to a competitive spy discord, but to everyone interested, myself and the Chucklenuts will be holding a competitive tournament with RGL at the end of the month. Yeah, hey look there, it's me. So if you're interested in playing against some of your favorite Team Fortress 2 YouTubers in a competitive, casual kind of setting, then I'll leave more info in the comments and in the description. Anyway, hope to see you guys soon. I'll try to get more uploads out, I promise.